I would like to say I'm sorry about this example, but I'm not. Uh, don't freak out about this. It's really not that bad. Slow down, take a deep breath, and look at what you have. You've got three fractions, and we know that we need to have these guys all have the same denominator, which means we're going to put in missing factors. But you can't put in missing factors, and you can't even identify what the factors are until you actually factor. So we're going to take each of these denominators, and we're going to factor them. So this guy will factor as, let's see, factors of 10, the subtract of 3. So we're going to have x plus 5 times x minus 2. Here, we need factors of 20 that subtract to 1. So we'll have x plus 5 times x minus 4. And finally over here, factors of 8 that add to 6. So it's going to be 2 and 4, and these guys both need to be negative. Now, here's a, a bit of, hopefully, words of wisdom for you when it comes to these big rational equations. If these, if this factorization has nothing in common with this or that, you've probably done something wrong. Like if each pair of factors are totally different, like they have nothing in common with anybody else, go back and check your signs. Make sure you copy the problem down correctly because it's very rare that something like that is going to happen to us you know, in this class. So the next thing we do is that we take our different colored pen or pencil and we put in those factors that are missing. So if I look here, what does everybody else have that he doesn't have? Well, this guy has the x plus 5, and this one has the x minus 2. But these guys both contain x minus 4, so that's what's missing. So I'm going to put in the factor x minus 4. And, as we saw in the previous example, I need to put that in the numerator as well. So what's missing here? Well, everybody else has the factor x minus 2. So that is the missing factor. And you can even tell just from these first two uh, fractions, you have the same set of factors. The order may be different, but they're still the same factors, which means it's the same expression in the denominator. And finally, on the right side, we're missing the factor x plus 5. All right. So since everybody has the same denominator, we can now rewrite our equation just by looking at the numerators. So we have x times x minus 4 plus 9 times x minus 2 is equal to 2. times x plus 5. All right? And now we just distribute to see what we have. So distribute here. We have x squared minus 4x. Distribute the 9. So plus 9x minus 18. And on the right side, distribute the 2. And we have 2x plus 10. Now, I hope that you guys recognize that there's an x squared here, which tells you this is going to be quadratic, which means we should probably go ahead and get everything to the same side of the equation. Now, if you would rather go ahead and combine like terms over here, that is totally fine. I think it's going to help us out in this next step when we try to get everybody to the same side. All right. So... I've got the x squared. I need to move these two terms from the right to the left. So let's subtract 2x. And at the same time, we're going to move the 10 to the other side by subtracting 10. All right. So we have x squared. Combine these like terms. That's plus 3x and minus 28. Alright, doesn't look to be too bad. It's a nice polynomial, something that we should be able to easily factor. And you'll find out that this guy factors as x plus 7 times x minus 4. 
All right. Love it when it's got a lead coefficient of 1. And so from here, x is equal to negative 7. Or from the other factor, x equals 4. But again, before we start boxing everything, we need to make sure that we identify any restricted values. So looking up here, what would make x plus 5 equal 0? Well, that would be negative 5. What makes this factor equal 0? Positive 2. And how about this guy? Well, that would be positive 4. So as long as we don't have any of those restricted values as a solution, we're going to be OK. But you see right here we have x equals 4 as a solution. So it's not that we did anything wrong. In fact, if I start right here, both of these guys work. But I didn't. I started up here with fractions. And with fractions, you have certain limitations, certain restrictions, because you can't have a denominator that equals 0. And the denominator would equal 0 if you were to plug in any of these values. All right. So we have to go back to the original equation and the original restrictions, which tells us that x equals negative 7 is totally fine. Totally fine. No problems. But it's x equals 4 that is the problem. So you don't box this guy. You don't include him in the solution set. Instead, he has a special name. This is what we call an extraneous solution. Okay. Again, we didn't do anything wrong. It's extraneous because when we try to plug it back into the original equation, we run into a contradiction. We run into an issue with the expression now being undefined. So when you take a test with me or any kind of assessment, you want to make sure that you clearly identify, this is my answer. This guy is not included. If you want to say he's extraneous, that's great. If you just want to kind of cross him out because you understand he's a restricted value, that's fine. When you're doing your homework in my math lab and it has a blank free to fill in your answer, this is the only guy you type. Okay. Now, it could be that there's an equation where you only have one answer and it's extraneous. And if that's the case, then there's no solution because there's no valid replacement that's going to make the original equation true. So you got to watch out for that.